All right, y'all, we are at the gym again. And I'm, this time I'm going to demonstrate weighted hanging sit-ups. So I have these boots that let me hang upside down from the chin-up bar. And then I've got the 25 pound or 11 kilogram weight. So I'm gonna do some sit-ups with those. And we're going to use the weight, my mass, my height, in order to calculate the work that is required to do the hanging sit-ups. So that was 10 repetitions with the weight. And so we'll use my body length and weight and the mass of that weight in order to calculate the amount of work done for the 10 hanging steps. Here we're gonna calculate the work required to do the hanging sit-ups. So we'll first we'll calculate work for one hanging sit-up and then we'll multiply it by all 10. So if we're given mass of person, mass of weight, and then all of the initial heights. So initially we have height to center of gravity of person one, H, P one, and then the height to the weight originally, H, W one, then height to the weight finally, H, W two, and height to the person's center of gravity, finally, H, P two. Now let's say mass of the person is 55 kilograms. Mass of the weight, this is a 25 pound weight, so that's 11 kilograms. And then each of the heights, HP1 is about halfway of my, I'm two meters tall, so HW1 equals two meters, actually negative two we assign our coordinate frame here. And then HP1 is about half of that. Then finally, HW2 all the way up at the top is zero. And HP2, center of gravity is shifted up a little bit. Let's say that's 0 0.6 meters. So this is state one and this is state two. We need to figure out how much work did it take to get from state one to state two. So we'll start out using the principle of work and energy. So energy at one plus work from one to two equals energy at two. Well, at state one, there's only potential energy. I started from rest, so, and it, I'm hanging ne negative. So P E of the person, state one, plus potential energy weight, state one, plus work from one to two equals, and then up at the top, potential energy of the person at two plus potential energy of the weight at two. So now we'll put in formulas. Remember the potential energy formula is MGH. So we'll put all of those in. then we can rearrange and get W1 to two by itself because that's what we need to solve for. So 
So now we put numbers in. So the work from one to two equals 432 joules for one rep. Well, in the video, I did 10 reps. So we'll multiply this. So the work for a set Forty three twenty joules. So here we calculated energy at state one, energy at state two, and then the work that it took to raise the potential energy from state one to state two is what we calculated. Now in this example, Let's say that after I hit the top of the bar, then I went all the way down to the bottom and I y'all could see from the video that I had to stop myself at the bottom by bumping the weight on the ground. So in this case, we know that my velocity was not zero when I was coming down. So now let's calculate what is my velocity at the bottom right before I stop myself. And for that, we can use conservation of energy, assuming that all the potential energy at the top got changed into kinetic and potential at the bottom. So here, we'll assume that I went back into exactly the same position as I was originally. So at state three, HP3 and HW3 are the same as they are at state one. So now we'll write conservation of energy. Energy at state two equals energy at state three. Now at state two, there's potential energy. Potential energy at two of the person. Potential energy at state two of the weight. That has to equal the energy at three. So potential energy of the person at three plus potential energy of the weight at three, plus kinetic energy at state three. And we'll assume that the person and the weight have the same velocity at the bottom. So if we rearrange, we need to get kinetic energy by itself, but first let's put in the formulas. So potential energy is MGH, So now let's rearrange and try to get velocity by itself. And now we'll plug in the numbers. So velocity equals 1.82 meters per second at the bottom. So in this case, we use conservation of energy, assuming that all the potential energy at the top was converted into potential and kinetic as I fell to the bottom. So we just plugged in the variables, rearranged, and solved for B.